It's your boy Moxburg Slim coming live from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, this is Coach B.D. Waddell, West Mac High School. I'm Doug Rashid. I'm a Grammy-nominated record producer. Hey, I'm LaCoya McLean. I used to be known as MA1570847. Hey, my name is Lydia. I'm a social injustice activist. Hey, it's Danielle E. Brown, songwriter and artist, and we're rocking with Grand Dossier TV. Hello, my name is Amber Hairston, and I am an R&B singer, songwriter. Welcome back to another great show on Grand Dossier TV, where I have here my friend, Miss Amber Harrison, R&B sofa singer and songwriter. Miss Amber, how are you doing today? I'm doing lovely. You know, I'm operating off of like two hours of sleep because I'm sporadic and I just do things, but I'm doing great. I understand that. I saw on Facebook that you just came back from Atlanta, so I'm so glad to have you here on the show. But before we get the show started, everybody, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you hit the notification bell so when we go live, you get all the up-to-date videos we have here on Grand Dossier TV. With that being said, let's find out more, more about my friend, Ms. Amber. Um, like I said, I noticed uh, you on Facebook. You're doing a lot of traveling, doing a lot of singing, had a couple shows. Uh, had a show on March 10th. We're going to get into all that good stuff. But the first question we have for the fans is, what got you into singing and starting this beautiful career that you have? So I would say that it stemmed from being in the gospel choir, being around family members that can sing as well. And naturally, I just, you know, I was able to sing. So that's how I started singing, um, you know, from a little girl all the way up. Now, as a little girl, I used to get called, um, you know, in the choir. My mm -hmm. grandfather used to call me up. So that started my journey with singing as well. So I appreciate my grandfather. I appreciate, you know, those people that pushed me when I was like younger to get up there and lead those selections. And when I was a little kid, because that all helped me overall. Yes, our people has a, our culture has a great uh, way of starting in church and bringing it on out to the mainstream of R and B or gospel, whatever they make it in, and it gets the butterflies out of you early. So, yeah. mm -hmm. what told you after you were singing in the choir, you're doing stuff with your grandfather? What said, "Hey, I can probably take this and make a career out of it"? What gave you the confidence for that? Well, I would say the reaction from people around me. You know, everybody would be like, "Hey, you can really sing." what are you doing with your talent? What are you doing with your gift? Or people would ask me, like, I want to be your manager. Mm -hmm. I would get random calls. I remember I was in, I was in school uh, taking a completely different route. Mm -hmm. I was studying therapy, and I would have people from New York that had ties to, like, Atlantic Record that mm -hmm. would call me. It was, like, this one manager, and he just wanted me so bad, but I was not in the, in the zone to be an artist yet. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there yet. And I was like, sorry, I'm going to focus on my career. I, I don't feel the need, but I pushed myself and I just got out there and I, I eventually just was like, you know what, you can do this. You don't have to take this route, you know, because I, I thought I had to take the occupational therapy route, gotcha. but I didn't have to take that route. I was like, you already have your degree. That's good enough. Mm -hmm. You have something, a financial backing. So I decided to just go all the way through. Once I had the, those people pushing me in my ear, just supporting me and also, you know, once I seen them, these people that wanted to manage me so early on, and I just didn't think that I even had the capability to, to do what I do. At, you know, then I didn't think that I had the capability to be an artist. I just was like, I'm a little singer, right. you know, but I had people push me. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. Now, one thing I have noticed, <laughs> I had a couple artists come on my show before. I have heard some stories about managers and people wanting to manage yeah. people. What are some of the things that you said, hmm, I can't believe this industry is like this with them? Well, I mean, there's definitely, like, different things that go on out here. But there's nothing that made me, like, go, like, hmm, you know, I, this going on, what's going on out here? So I don't really have too much experience with that. I try to stay away from, like, negativity with people. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So what's what's up uh, next? Uh, 
not even what's up next. What songs are we singing right now? What you're pushing? What songs do you have that's out there that people can go listen to? Uh, what's something that you've been working on that you can't wait for people to hear? So, y'all, my newest single invitation right now, that's the one I'm pushing. It's out on all platforms. Um, that song is so beautiful. It's a love song. It's about somebody that has, you know, love for somebody like a... a almost like an addiction feeling, but they don't need that at the moment in the time. So that song, please listen. It's on all platforms. I mean, I always say Facebook, but it's on Shazam, Deezer, Pandora. Well, I don't know about Pandora, but I know it's on like Apple Music, uh -huh. YouTube, all of that. Please stream that. Self-love. Self-love is amazing. That one as well. I love the I beat love that song too. Yeah, self love, it gets you going, you know, it's that it's that vibe, like it makes you dance. You're riding down the highway, you wanna be in a good a good vibe, a good zone, turn that song on. Yes. yes. Self love. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you explained uh imitation because me and my wife was debating this last night of what this song was about. Um Especially when you say it's an addiction, it's an addiction. I don't think I want that right now. I said, listen, it's like a love song of a drug. I said, I love this song. Yeah. I said, I love it. It's like somebody you probably like be messing with or something yeah. on the side. Yeah, but okay. you know you don't need that right now. So is it a fling? Or is it like more of a, we had something going, but I'm not sure if I want to keep going with it. I would it. say it's more of a fling. That's what, that's what I know. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what my opinion would be. Okay. But I wasn't the songwriter. The songwriter is DaVinci Royal. So okay. who knows what he was thinking, but I have my own it interpretation. So, I have um, my own interpretation of it. So do we have a video for it? Not yet, but there's some things in the work. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So how would you describe your, uh, the music that you make? How would you describe that? The music that I make, I would say that it's, um, soulful, sultry. It gets, it gets you moving. It has feeling behind it. It actually, the lyrics mean something. Mm -hmm. You know, little kids can listen to my records and be and feel okay. So that's how I feel about my songs. I feel like it's a blessing to the ears. I sound like <laughs> a blessing to my when I listen to you saying you have a beautiful voice. Now I noticed uh, looking at Facebook that you said on there that Jasmine Sullivan is your favorite artist. How has she influenced your career? Uh, what has she done for you? Because I think you was at a concert or something at, at hers, and you was watching and you was cheering and you was excited to see her in person. So how has that really influenced what you're doing? Yes, yeah, so Jasmine Sullivan, I love Jasmine Sullivan. She's amazing. I believe her vocal agility is insane her riffs her runs mm -hmm. when she goes from low to high i believe all of that in totality makes her overall a great artist and she definitely inspires me to be better my friend surprised me with tickets oh i knew you was happy my friend surprised me with tickets to the jasmine sullivan concert i was very happy just because like she was like i know you love her so i can't not go mm -hmm. without you to her concert so that was dope so besides Jasmine Sullivan, if you had to work with any artist, mm -hmm. I know you work with her. Who would you work with? Mm -hmm. Beyonce easily. I know that's like <laughs> overrated. I know it's like an overrated answer. I don't want it to be like an overrated answer, but but like Beyonce, she's a great performer overall. And not True. only is she a great performer, but she's a great vocalist. So who wouldn't want to work with her and better themselves and make themselves better? Also, her. I would love to work with her. I love that she can play instruments, mm -hmm. too. Can you? No, I can't. Mm -hmm. But I'm working on a few things, you know. So, so what, but her. What male artist would you work with? Hmm. Let me see. That's a good question. Daniel Caesar. I feel like he could bring out some flavor in me, in gotcha. my voice. Especially listening to, like, Best Part mm -hmm. with her, mm -hmm. you know. Daniel Caesar. Yeah. And let me see who else. If Luther Vandross was living, <laughs> I can see that. his voice I is like so angelic. No one can ever touch his voice. Nobody ever, ever on the earth can ever touch his voice. Like he had a beautiful voice. Like he literally, he barely opened his mouth and he was able to move the audience sure. so much. Even live, I was just like in awe. I watch his performances to better myself and he's like insane. Like this, this man is crazy. So him. Now, I had, somebody gave me a comparison when they heard your voice. Now, I don't know how you're going to take this. So if you don't take it well, I'm going to edit it okay, out. Okay, what comparison? What comparison? Because you have the deepness in your voice. Okay. They said you had like that, the, you, or you are the black person. Oh, uh, um, uh, what's her name? It's not Odell. I think about the basketball. Adele. 
Adele? Yeah, they, they remind you of, they say you remind them of Adele. Okay. So, I mean, so she's you, amazing to me, so shoot. I mean, she's a great singer. So gotcha. That's great to me. I can see how, you, how, how would you listen to that? What have people said about you before? Uh, who they well, were, who people you say about? I sound like Rihanna sometimes with certain things. Okay. You know, I've heard like I think Beyonce. You sing better than Rihanna. Thank that's you. me. You, you sound better than Rihanna singing wise. Thank you. I think she's I, so amazing, though, but you know. True. True, but I, I appreciate you. I, I just think of the Caribbean in her voice is what people really get sold on and the stuff she do. But as far as yeah. standing flat footed, pound for pound singing, you sound better than Rihanna. Well, thank you. You sound better than thank Rihanna. You so, so getting to that, getting to you sounding better than Rihanna, what do we have to do to get Amber Harrison name and likes just like her? So you working. I see you working. Mm -hmm. But what do we have to do? What is, what is the thing we have to break through to get you there? Just keep on streaming my music, support me as much as you can. Come out to my shows. like. And if you know of any shows, any performances, tell me about it. Mm -hmm. If you have something that, you know, if you're my friend or something, if you want to put me on to a gig or anything, let me know to better help me. That way I can connect and, and network as much as I can, as much as possible. And if you're listening to my music, that can help me, you know, overall can help to spread the word, to get my music out here to other people as well. So stream my music. I, uh, when I downloaded your music yesterday, I will say I yes, love... thank you. You're welcome. I will say I love the way you marketed your songs with the covers. Like mm -hmm. you had the one about butterflies, got the butterfly on there. You had the oh. song... Um, um, what's that? I was saying the name of the song. Well, anyway, you had the beach background in the back of the name of that song. Um, self-love self-love had the beach background right there yeah. then with uh, mm -hmm. invitation the cover was fitting what you was doing so I love your marketing who's in control of that for you who's in control of your name image and likeness what's that Sky J I think Sky J okay. I, I believe so okay yeah. wonderful job I was thinking wonderful wait job. wait a minute who was in control hold on wait a minute you said just the marketing part? Like I was saying, everything. Or, like everything. Like, whoever's doing your stuff, I love what they're doing with you. Like, it's amazing. At that time, I would say it was Scott J. Okay. And was it, I'm trying to think, was it like Austin and them too at the same time? Mm -hmm. I guess we could say the video people too, right? Like Austin. That's what I was trying to think. Austin, um, Austin Aldo, and um, Ali. They all were helpful as well. Um, mm -hmm. I would say Javinci Royal at the time as well um, was a great help. Everybody, I had I had good help, good people around me, good support. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, by being on Grand Dossier TV, you get a chance to talk to new fans and fans that's going currently on what watch you on here. Mm -hmm. What's the one message that you have for them? You said the one message I have for my yeah, fans. Yeah, like, what's the message you have for your fans? Okay. What's something you would like to tell them? Stream my music and support local artists as much as you can because especially the really good talented ones because it's hard for us you know we have people that believe but it is still a hard journey mm -hmm. until you can convince the entire world to believe in you so just support local artists okay now, yeah we all have made platinum <laughs> shower songs so do you do you get most of your like your thoughts and banking during the time of that like singing in the shower i mean i would say not really, even though I know most people get their thoughts right, probably right. in the shower. I would say mine is like late at night when it, probably everybody is sleeping. I'm up at like four or five in the morning. That's when I get wow. most, the most creative. A lot of people do. Yeah. A lot of people do. So you yeah. write it I noticed that pattern. Yeah. Why so late, bro? I gotta, really, gotta get to sleep. I really don't understand why my body decides, <laughs> well, my why my mind decides to be creative like randomly at that time. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just like the artistic in me, I don't know. Gotcha. Now you but, said you said something earlier uh, about getting your degree, but if you was not singing, what would you be doing? Like, what so, would be your main passion from a little girl up? You said I want to do this. Occupational therapy. Okay. Why I was in grad school for that because I have a sister that um, is special needs. She has red syndrome. She cannot walk or talk, and I helped raise her all my life mm -hmm. since I was like a little girl. So. My background and my experience, I was like, you know what? You have what it takes to help other people that aren't able to walk or aren't able to talk as well. So I wanted to take that experience that I had and, you know, um, help those other people in the community 
that aren't that aren't able to help themselves because that's what occupational therapists do. They pretty much help the person like build themselves back up again. Maybe yeah. if you needed to eat again or something, they just better help the person. So that would have been my career overall. But I love this so much that I dropped out of grad school um, for occupational therapy to pursue my career. Gotcha. It was that strong on my heart. I've always felt a pull, like like I'm just. I've always felt that I was going to be on a Grammy stage one day. Like we're going to look back at this video right now and be like, "Whoa, Wrong. this girl was like actually speaking her life into fruition, into existence." But I, I feel like I'm going to be a very well-known singer one gotcha. day. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, with us making music, well, with you making music, I want to say with us, with you making music, mm -hmm. with you want to be a platinum singer one day. What is the end goal? I mean, we can make 10, 20 albums all day long, but what's the one thing you want the Amber Harrison legacy to be? What's the impact on the world that you want to have? I just want the world to be able to know what my voice sounds like. Like, that's my goal overall. Just getting my music out there is all I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very small. So if they can just all listen to my music, that would be fine with me. Gotcha. Smallest thing I'm asking for. I would be grateful for just being a well-known artist. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't, it doesn't even have to be like world known as long as I'm financially stable from it because this is my passion and mm -hmm. what I love and this is my career. So even if I'm making like six figures off of what I love, you know, just because like a lot of people well-known, you know, well-known artists, a lot of people got a hold to my music. So gotcha. that. Mm -hmm. In today's world, take not I, I'm over here. I've noticed I've been looking at you. And yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, that was fine. I, I hope that doesn't mess up with oh, no, okay. that. That's what you should do. Okay. Well, in the world today with technology, mm -hmm. how would you say the internet has helped music? And how would you say it hurts music? Yeah. You know what? I would say that it helps a lot, mm -hmm. right? Because there's opportunities out there for artists. Um, there's different placements and websites that you can look into um, as an artist to better help yourself. There's um, people out there as well on the internet that would better help you and, you know, people with better experience in the industry that can um, help you because they'll see you. Mm -hmm. Eventually, if you keep on posting, if you keep on pressing, if you keep on popping on challenges, eventually you'll get noticed if you just keep working hard. And I think that is how... Um, Social media and internet is easy now for people. But as far as like hurtful anyway, I wouldn't see that it's like harmful. Maybe the fact that with streaming services, people don't make as much money as they did back in the day when they had like CDs and stuff. That could be the only way that potentially the internet and media could put a damper on an, an artist financially. Is there anything about the industry or the internet, the way we stream music now, is there anything that you would change if you could? About the industry? The industry or, or the way we stream Yeah, music? yeah, definitely. I, I would definitely, like, have more peace in there because I know I'm, I'm a discernment person. I'm an energy person. I'm a huge energy person. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I can feel energy so heavy, but I just feel like... Hold on, wait. What was the question again? Is there anything you would change about the industry? Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, I'm a huge energy person. Mm -hmm. So what I would change about the industry is how evil these people are. Like, they're so evil, and I would just want to come in and just create peace only. Yeah. Like, try to just, and, and put God in there, because, you know, the devil is, like, so busy. Yeah, sure. Like, especially in the industry. And so I would just, like, put some prayer in there. I would come <laughs> in, you. you know, I would come in casting out demons and devils because, like, you know, I love what I do, but I also know, like, where there's good, there's evil. True. And so I would just want to come in and bring as much positivity and good things as possible. Yo, I really forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. Well, I was like, what? It's cool. For all the new okay, people, me... for all the new people that's watching right now, for everybody that's going to see you, uh, where can they find you at? What's your show, uh, social media platforms they can find you? Um, what can we expect in the next two weeks, three months, next year? Yeah, so they can find me on um I was about to say on official Amber Hairston. They can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is official Amber Hairston. Mm -hmm. And you can find me on Facebook. My name is Amber Hairston. You can find me on YouTube. My name is Amber Hairston. I only have like one video right now, but there's going to be some more content coming. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that way you can be updated on any upcoming videos that I have.
kind of stuff. I love it. With that being said, everybody on Grand Dossier Nation, make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, make sure you go out and support my friend, Amber Harrison, the next, well, I ain't gonna say next, the greatest thing going right now in R&B <laughs> singing. Check her music out if you want something new and not that same old, same old that they keep giving you on the radio. With that being said, Grand Dossier TV, we out. Oh!